I don't know if you watched the last video where I showed those French beans up at the top of the lot, which were eaten to bits, and then this bed here, which is perfect under the netting. And I just thought, right, okay, I've got to deal with that. I can't, <laughs> can't have that going on much longer. So I bought some more stuff uh, to get this bed netted. Yeah, this is it. The squash are doing fine. They're all going to grow out that way, so they're fine. But these French beans, I mean, look at them. I'm going to just do a bit of weeding first, but they're just being devastated. And I think it's a mixture of slugs, snails, and probably pheasants as well picking off the tip so I need to get these uh, protected so let me just show you what we've got now things I really recommend for doing this sort of creating your own netted beds is this netting that comes on rolls you can get it online it's builders scaffold netting it's UV protected and it's black which I quite like it means it doesn't show up too much on the allotment but it's also very fine and it means you know you don't get a lot of critters uh, nesting eggs and crawling through it uh, it's so fine. Um, I've also bought some more steel pins. These are to slide the pipe onto. I've got some more black water pipe. This is PVC, not PVC, it's a different type. I put it on the screen. Uh, water pipe, and uh, this is really good. This is 25 millimeter pipe. I've got a gas cutter to cut the netting, saw to cut the pipe, hammer to bang the spikes in. <laughs> Uh, and I've got one already, which was one which I haven't used, so that's the length that I've got to uh, make it to. And then I brought up some celery as well, looking a little pale. I need to get this in the ground. It's been languishing at home forever. It's probably a bit late, uh, but I'm going to put this, plant this out a little bit later as well. I now want to unroll this uh, coil of pipe because it probably needs to straighten out a little bit. And then we can start measuring up and cutting um, more hoops and then get this bed made up. So first things first is just to uh, cut all this strapping off. I wonder if when I do this it's all going to completely ping open. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll have to see. Right, here we go. I'm just going to actually do it approximately, I think. So we'll just work out from the end here. We'll just take it like this and see how we get on. I'm just using this saw. I find these really useful, these saws. I mentioned them in the video ages ago. Uh, just little hand sort of pruning saw, woodman saw, outdoor saw. But yeah, these are kind of handy. They just fold up and just go in your bag. Great to take to the allotment uh, if you need for anything like this, cutting wood or anything. Right, now I'm just going to cut it uh, just through here like this. Make short work of this this sort which is perfect and there we go so I've got that end and this end and a nice new hoop right and there we have it one two three and the original one four. Right, let's get these metal spikes out, then we can put these on the bed. Let's put these over here. I've mentioned these before, these are sort of a steel road spike. I'm not quite sure what they're used for in the construction industry, something to do with roads, I guess, but yeah, basically they're, um, they've got sort of like a, a point on one end and a flat end on the other, so you bang them in the ground and they go up inside the, uh, the the actual uh, hoops. So just cut, cut the packaging off and they come in what in tens and then basically they're very heavy. <laughs> That's the only thing. But I'll just open them and show you what they're like. It's just like a straight steel pin. Morning. Yeah with a point on the end and a flat end on that end. You can just bang them in the ground and these just go in the pipes. So yeah right let's get these in position hoops up. Right, let's just bang these in. So just one at either end. Right, and then all you've got to do is get your hoop, slide it on the end. Put 
perfect. There we go. And then we'll put canes at the top when we put all these in. Right, that's all those on there. For the eagle-eyed amongst you, you may notice that um, the beans obviously in these squash are a bit too close together and obviously we don't want the squash growing in the netting. So what I'm going to do uh, is move some of these beans now. Actually, let me just show you. So what it is, you'll see uh, more better here, <laughs> is obviously I've got these squash here and the beans here. And we've got the netting going over the squash, but obviously we don't want the squash growing inside the bed. We want them to grow out that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to net everything uh, first to make sure that I get the netting at the right length so that it covers the whole bed so it's useful in the future. And then what I'm going to do is um, when these are a bit bigger, uh, because they get nibbled a little bit when they're a bit bigger, I shall move this hoop into here. Uh, and I, what I should do now is move these beans into the gaps uh, so that the netting can then come down in here. So that's a good thing about this system. It's really easy just to move about. You haven't got any clips on the side of the bed. Quite often you see, and I did it right at the beginning, um, you see people see screw clips to the wood, but basically that means that your hoops are immovable. Well, they've always got to go in the same place. So by using these uh, these road spikes, you can obviously move your hoops around and have them on any size bed and so on. So right, I'm just going to get a trowel and we'll move, I think one, two, three, four, five, six runner, uh, six of these beans and put them in these spaces and water them in. Seeing the roots on there, still looking quite healthy. Let's see if we can move it in one piece. <laughs> so I dug a hole uh, previously, just very quickly while you weren't looking. <laughs> so we just slide that in there. Put that back in, firm it in, make a little well, and we'll get some water. There we go. Give it a good drink. Right, that's all those watered in. But what I need now is some canes. Uh, and I use these to tie across the top of the hoops to hold them in place. So I just need some of those. This is one reason why you have netting on. <laughs> Can you see it? He's desperate to get in there to the cauliflowers, but he can't. Without the netting, I'd have caterpillars all over them. Right. Got some twine, it's just basic twine. I mean, this is the colored blue stuff. You can get it in all sorts of colors as it goes, but uh, yeah, just use that. And then I'm just gonna tie the canes to the underneath of the um, hoops. And the reason I do that is so that it doesn't catch on the top. Um, it would be good if you had something which went over the end of the cane so it didn't catch on the netting, like a tennis ball or something like that, um, which would be good. But yeah, basically I'm just gonna tie it to the underneath. So we have it, that's all tied up now, nice and strong. You can see the whole thing is fairly firm, isn't gonna go anywhere. And what it means by putting these um, bamboo canes is that when you put the net over and put it tight, these end canes don't all bend in, which you'll see. I didn't at the time tie this one in, just as a little example. Uh, you can see how this all bends in if you don't have canes. So I need to actually take this off and put canes in on that bed, but yeah. These are all tied in now and uh, nice and firm. So what we need to do now is get the netting. Get the netting and then uh, just lay this out along the length of the bed. And then we need to give ourselves quite a bit of extra at the end, uh, just so that it can drape down at the end and be um, held down by it. Oh, some weight, like a brick or something. Right. Just um, wiggle this. Just unwind it. What I tend to do is leave about, say a metre at either end, a bit over, over the length. And then that means that it can pull down and be weighed down at the end. Right, so I've got the length about here. So we'll just go and cut this with the gas torch. Right, 
just put that down there. Now, as you have all probably seen if you've watched my other videos, uh, and I mentioned earlier that I like to use a gas torch to cut things with. It's just camping gas, very simple. Uh, just give it a shake, make sure we've got it all mixed up. And then it's got a little pizza igniter on it, so you don't need a match or anything like that. And then you just turn it on. You can hear it go whoosh. And then press the clicker. There you go. It's best to hold it away from you when you light it, obviously. And obviously not cut it over the plastic if you've got wee fabric down. So it'll melt anything, so I do it over the grass. So obviously, make sure you hold it away from you, not near the other bit of the roll, and then you can cut down towards you. Now, another important thing to try and do is as quick as possible just to open it up, otherwise the um, threads can stick together. And then what that does gives you, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, gives you like a sealed edge, which is what you want, obviously you don't want it to keep fraying. So ideally, if you can get yourself a gas cutter, especially um, for weed fabric here, which just comes unraveled at the edges, if you don't, if you just cut it with the scissors, um, yeah, this is the best way to do it. Right, let's get this over the hoops. Just come back down this end, drag that along. Make sure you've got the overlap at both ends. I've slightly overcompensated on this one, but anyway. <laughs> right, and then we just open it up and pull it over the bed. Yeah, plenty of room, I think. And the good thing about this netting actually is it has, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but it has like a, a middle seam, a sort of a mark, so you can see it's like a crease in the fabric where the middle of it is. And you can just then line that up with your canes. Let me just show you. So yeah, you can see here, there's like a crease, it's like a fold, but there's also some bigger holes. So yeah, it's really good, this netting. Right, let's get the bricks and uh, we can weigh this down for weight at the end. Now I use these, these are old fire bricks actually, or heating bricks out of um, an Economy 7 system, so they're brimming heavy. And I use these on the ends, but you could just use any old brick I suppose. And then these are just some uh, free bricks which I got off a neighbour, uh, and then I just use these for the sides. So if we just gather everything together at the end, and then we can weigh it down. So what I do is I just gather it all in here and uh, make sure it's over the edges of the bed. So it goes over the edge of the raised beds, if you've got raised beds. And then you just twist it nice and tight, like that. And you get your heavy brick. <laughs> Put that on the end there, like that. And then we do the same the other end. So again, as you can see, yeah, I'm slightly, <laughs> slightly over uh, extended this one. But anyway, yeah, pull it tight around the edges of the bed, get it in the middle, and uh, yeah, give it a good twist. And that keeps it nice and tight down the sides. And I'll show you another reason why that's good in a second. Put your brick on the end there. Nice and heavy, that's what you want, just to hold it nice and tight. And then that just keeps it all nice and firm in. This is why you pull it so tight. So you pull it tight down to the bottom, it forms like a natural barrier against against here, which sort of stops birds getting in, but also slugs and snails. So we get our last brick for this side, anyway. I'm running out of bricks, so I've only got one left. <laughs> Pull the netting out a bit, pop your brick on, and then that keeps it nice and tight, and it means the netting's not gonna blow off in the wind. Right, so I get the last one. Here, in, in the middle, nice and tight. And so now, if we uh, go down, we can have a look. The whole bed, nice and netted, nice and tight. So no birds are going to get in there. You'll probably find slugs won't get in underneath. Some might, uh, but this netting is very fine, as you can see. So they can't really get through that snails, especially. Anyway, uh, what you will notice occasionally is. You will get slugs and snails hiding 
underneath this brick so it's worth every now and again checking under this brick um, and then getting rid of the slugs and snails but yeah that's it that is i'm almost out of breath i i think i need to get food uh that's that bed netted and hooped so i'll keep you up to date and let you know if they recover and how well they do and see if this netting actually really makes a difference I and mean, i think it does i think if you struggle a lot on your allotments from you know birds i don't know if this would work for foxes it might do but definitely for birds slugs and snails it's worth looking into this uh uh, netting as I say it's UV protected it's very fine it's not really anything can get through there really apart from tiny moths maybe okay right let's get on do the celery these celery now as I mentioned in the previous video they're going they're a bit white they, they need feeding they need going out in the ground but they're called uh, Loretta and I planted them on the 14th of May uh, sowed them on the 14th of May. So I'm going to put these in the ground all nice and close together. I've got a bit of a space down by the artichokes. Right, let's go and do that now. All right, yeah, I've got this space just here because, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, the artichokes have sort of died back a bit now. I've got plenty of new shoots coming. I think there's about five or six, so that's all going to be fine. But I've got this space just here. So I'm just going to, yeah, basically fill this up, um, putting the celery in quite tight together so that they sort of help blanch each other. Blanching, if you don't know, is obviously, not obviously, but on celery you eat this, when you get them from the supermarket, the stems are quite white, aren't they? A bit green, and that's what makes them nice. If they go berry green, they're not so good. So it's quite good to get them close together, and then at least the ones on the inside don't get so much sun, and then that means they sort of, sort of self-blanch each other. Anyway, yeah, these are they. Uh, they're a bit dry, uh, but the roots are okay. So really, I mean, they should be given a little soak beforehand. Actually, I might just do that now. I'll get some water, give them some water, and then we'll, they'll plant them out. All right, it's got some water. It's always good practice, actually, if you're new to this, is to make sure that your plants are nicely watered before, you know, and the root balls are nice and wet before you plant things. Just helps the plants settle in. means that they've got plenty of water around the roots if the soil's a bit dry. Anyway, we'll water them in as well. But yeah, just leave that for a few minutes just to, uh, to oh, get settled in. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll take the biggest ones first. And then, we'll, yeah, say just put them nice and tight together. Just dig a hole, pop them out. Roots are quite nice, so yeah, I'm just going to tease them out a little bit. Just so that they get a bit more adventurous. Pop them in there. And firm them in. Make a little well and water them all in. And hopefully they'll really like this new space and we shall have some good celery. Um, they get the socks on and grow. <laughs> Let's get all of those celery in. All of them in, squeeze them in. Not really a very regular block, but not uh, not not too shabby. And I'm hoping they'll green up soon enough, and then we might get some celery. Because I mentioned in the last video, I'm making lots of these uh, juices at the moment, and I'm using a lot of celery in it. So I'm hoping this turns out okay. One thing to remember about celery is it likes plenty of moisture. So as though it likes the sunlight too, uh, you do have to remember to keep it nice and damp, so regular watering really helps with it. Uh, obviously not boggy, but yeah. I'll let you know how the other bed goes, because I really am hoping that it turns out like this one. Pristine beans in there. I mean, at some point, I suppose, uh, it might have to come off uh, the netting when the flowers come out, and we need to uh, yeah get the pollinators in and things, but at the moment there are no signs of flowers on there, so... I'm uh, a little few, few couple of weeks away from that, I think. But yeah, I think the allotment's looking really nice at the moment. Corn's looking good, flowers good. Looks like the lavender are settling in, so everything's everything's not looking too bad. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.